the C-H-A-L-L, your Doncaster Rovers fan channel, and welcome to this video. Now today, we're going to be talking about some more news from Doncaster Rovers on today's DRFC transfer reports, because technically there are some transfer news involved in this. Now, at the end of this video, we're going to talk about all the trialists that could potentially be the trialists, the first crop of trialists, I'm going to talk about them uh, in the third story of today. We're also going to be talking about uh, this youngster, Liam Ravenhill, potentially getting a professional contract on the back of his brilliant performance against Scunthorpe United yesterday in the preseason match. And also today we're going to be talking about Gavin Baldwin's statement addressing the critics of a player turnover this season. Now before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the OK spell so you never miss a YouTube video. Also, I want to give a massive shout out to two channels that I've understood have subscribed to the channel. Talk Coventry City, big shout out to you. And also to Cod's Vlogs, who is a Fleetwood fan. Uh, he's got nearly 6,000 subscribers, so the fact that he's subscribed is brilliant. So thank you very much, Cod's Vlogs, and also to Talk Coventry City, as well as all our YouTube fans. And for now, guys, let's get into this video about Doncaster Rovers Football Club. So to kick off today, Gavin Baldwin has insisted it remains the long-term goal for Doncaster Rovers not to have a large turnover of players at the end of each season. But the chief executive says due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this will not be the sum where significant strides are made in achieving that aim. Rovers had 12 players under contract beyond June 30th of this year, leaving boss Darren Moore with a large recruitment drive on his hands ahead of the 2020-2021 campaign. That is the situation Baldwin has previously stated the club wants to avoid on a regular basis. He says the financial impact and uncertainty surrounding the pandemic means the club can only look to the immediate future if they are to operate with due care. Baldwin told the Free Press, We're quite clear that we want to reduce the number of contracts we want dropping off at the end of every season. However, we've been very honest so far in that this year we've had to protect the club by looking at one-year contracts and loans. Whereas before the pandemic, we would have been looking at a mix of one, two and three year deals and then loans. For this year, we've had to look at a key drive on keeping the club alive. We've got a stable business model now, but two months ago, the future looked really tough for all clubs. To hand out three year and two year contracts would have been brave and would have been playing the future of this football club. But I'm going to be blunt, they are appropriate to make sure that Doncaster Rovers is a business and is here for the fans going forward. Though one year deals look set to be the most likely option for the permanent signings this summer, Baldwin says the club will look to give themselves much chance of keeping strong performers beyond the end of the season. He says there are options in contracts and it might be an option for the club, it might be an option for the player. We can protect the club by saying if a player on a one year deal plays so many games then we are able to extend the deal by another year. So that is this story on Gavin Baldwin and the contract situation. Again, I applaud Baldwin. He's come out and said exactly what it is. You know, a lot of people have, I know a lot of fans have, you know, been interested to see why we are doing one year deals and low knees and the pandemic is a massive part of that and he's actually come out and said you know before covid we were going to do two th one two three year deals and two three year deals now would be very brave to do so you know he's keeping the financial situation of the club alive and he's focusing on the survival of the club and he's not going to waste money that's what that's why we've got some of the best owners run it that's why we're one of the best run clubs in the country because you know, we don't waste money. We, we keep money. And it's not because we're careful spenders or we try and keep as much money as possible. It's because we don't want to waste money and then be in loads of financial debt that the club can't be saved from. So, you know, it's very, very clear that, um, you know, they're, fo they're focusing on the club situation and the future of the club. So, you know, I think it's very, very, you know, very, very open that the club have said this and Baldwin said this. So... You know, again, they're very open with the fans. They're open about what's going on. And, um, you know, I'm very happy to have owners like Baldwin, Blunt, you know, people that own a shareholder in the club, Terry Brammel, um, the Watson family before they moved on, um, before they had a stake in the club. So, you know, we've got an ownership situation. You know, many other people have said it. I'll repeat it as well. We've got one of the best boards, probably the best board we've ever, ha we've ever had in club history. But it's one of the best boards in the EFL. 
not because we're careful spenders, but because we spend the right money in the right places uh, and for the right amount of deals. And we get the right people in. We get the right people in. Some signings may be average, but hopefully sooner or later they'll settle in. If they don't, then they'll get moved on if they want to leave. So, you know, we're, we're, we're fo oh, if we get squad in, like strength in depth and we get promoted to the championship and we continue getting high finishers closer and closer to the premiership, we could be one of the best run clubs in the top division if we ever got to the top division. So, you know, we should be one of the examples to the rest of the, um, to, to some of the other clubs, some of the big clubs that are run poorly, like Newcastle, uh, at times Arsenal are run very poorly. Uh, there's a lot of clubs that waste money or they have ownerships that just won't spend or back the football. And they'll just back sponsorship deals. And, you know, I saw the story about Arsenal sacking 55, you know, staff members. But the fact that they've, uh, Ozil said he's not leaving. And they just signed Willian on a free transfer, but paying him over 200 grand a week. You know, why? Um, but, yeah, good story there from Doncaster. And, yeah, we'll just have to get used to one-year contracts with extension potential and low needs as well. Which is, you know, usually our transfer policy. Let's move into our second out of three stories about the youngster Liam Ravenhill. So once again, according to the free press, like all the rest of the stories in this video, youngster Ravenhill backed for pro deal after excellent pre-season so far. Darren Moore says youngster Liam Ravenhill can quickly earn himself a full-time professional contract if he continues with his rate development at Doncaster Rovers. The midfielder started Rovers' first friendly of preseason on Saturday at Scunthorpe United, building on the positive impression he has made since the squad returned to training. While the plan is for the 17-year-old to return to the under-18s group in the coming weeks, Moore says he can ensure he is never far away from the senior setup if he continues to impress. So Moore said to the free press, watching him last season for the under-23s, he's got a wonderful appetite for the game and a great work rate for the team. He's coming along really well and sure pre-season with the first team will really benefit him when he goes back to the usual stomping ground. If he plays his cards right, the development of productivity, there is a wonderful new deal on the table for him. There's an opportunity for him to stake a claim and at the moment he's not a starter but you've all got to start from somewhere. So Liam Ravenhill, son of former Rovers midfielder Ricky Ravenhill, has just started his second year as a scholar with the club. He featured on Saturday alongside recent youth team graduates Lyric Hassani and Benjamin Blythe. Moore was pleased with the showing from his side, with the focus being largely on the feeling their way back into action more than five months on since their last match. He said, What I wanted was 45 minutes and for the players to start that road to match fitness and use the game to blow off a few of the cobwebs and get their timing right. It just got that rustiness out of their game and I think it will have done us the world of good. We scored three lovely goals. Brad Halliday with a precise finish and a really powerful strike. Ben Whiteman picked his spot and expertly and called it finishly. And Tom Anderson got across his man and side foot volleyed it. We conceded a couple of sloppy goals and it was probably a bit of miscommunication from a couple of the younger lads. So that, my friends, is the big story there surrounding Liam Ravenhill. They spoke a little bit about the preseason game as well, and I agree with Darren Moore. I think the goals were miscommunication. I spoke about that in the goals analysis video, which you can check out yourself on the channel. It's already on there. It was uploaded yesterday along with my match review. And it's raining right now. Thank God we've got rain because I've been boiling for weeks. <laughs> you can't see it, but it is. It's absolutely chucking it down. It might have stopped by the time you're watching this, but... By the now, it's chucking it down. Um, but, speaking a little bit there about the preseason game, I agree with more. I think that there's a lot of miscommunication. I think that there was... I think the goals that we conceded were miscommunication. I think it was the younger lads. But, it, like, like Darren Moore said, it was just brushing off those cobwebs. You know, brush off your cobwebs and just get going again after five months. I think it was just, you know, get used to the game again. And... You know, even though the the first goal, Lewis Jones should have maybe d done a different technique with the save. I think you know, again, it's one game. It's the first game in five months, so we're going to let him off with that. You know, you're bound to have an error or two. So, looking then at Liam Ravenhill, of course, son of Rovers midfielder Ricky Ravenhill, and um, he actually follows me now on Instagram. Uh, well, I, fo I followed him and then he followed me back. So, thank you very much, Liam. Um, but yeah, he, from, from the sounds of it, he did really, really well. From the highlights that I saw, he did quite well in the midfield in the first half. Even though there was no goals, he did quite decent in the first half. 
and uh, obviously Hassani played for 26 minutes in the first half and then you know brought off and then he was brought on for a full 45 in the second half and obviously Benjamin Blythe played the first half in the centre back role so you know playing some of these under 18s and some of these graduates from the under 18s and under 23 squad I think that you know it's a good run out for the youngsters in pre-season it's good to see them get some game time with the first team players like your Whiteman, your Halliday, your Anderson, your Okunabiri uh, so, you know, we've got a decent squad available and Liam Ravenhill definitely did a decent job in midfield. So, and I've seen loads of, you know, youth team clips from him last season. I think he can be a very impressive player. And I think that uh, Ravenhill will definitely be a good asset to the first team if he is given the call up once or twice, maybe in the cup games or the trophy games uh, or maybe one league game this season, maybe he gets to be on the bench and then comes on for the last 20 minutes or something. You know, so it'd be nice. So the, the first team is always open, but I think it's very likely he'll play with the under 18s for this next season. But, you know, like you said, the team, the senior setup is always open for Ravenhill. So, you know, I think, I think by the end of the next, uh, by the end of this next season, we'll have some kind of new contract for Ravenhill, hopefully. So, uh, very good signs from, uh, from Liam Ravenhill. If you watch this video, great signs for you, pal. Uh, let's go into our final story then, and let's speak about the try lists. So according to the free press, Darren Moore to give Doncaster Rovers trialists more time to impress. The four trialists who feature for Doncaster Rovers in their win under Scunthorpe United was all be given the further opportunity to impress in the club's second friendly of pre-season. Rovers fielded one trialist in the first half and three in the second of Glanford Park when they ran out 3-2 winners. The trialist joined up for the club on Thursday with the existing squad was permitted to train together for the first time. And they will report back to Cantley Park for training on Monday and feature in the next friendly, which boss Darren Moore sex to make a decision on whether they have a future at Rovers later this week. Now, Moore told the free press they are all in stake claim and try to impress and we'll see how they go over the next few days. The agreement was to have them on trial and play them in the games. If they have any aspirations about them continuing what they're doing. There's not been anything complicated about their roles in the team, and it's just been about seeing them in the team dynamic and ethic, and we'll see how they go. Over the course of a couple of days in training and with the games, you'll more or less get it right over whether you're going to look and keep them or let them go. We will have a good look at them again on Monday and Tuesday, and that should be my mind made up by then. The current crop of trellis are made up with three midfielders and a winger. So looking then at the trialist specifically, the winger is in his mid-twenties and has good experience in the English Football League. Two of the midfielders are also in their mid-twenties, one having played across various countries in Europe and the other seeing his senior experience come in non-league. The other midfielder is a youngster that was released by a Premier League club this summer. So what I've done is I've compiled a list of le of Championship League 1 and League 2 released players, as well as the, the Premier League Youngsters release lists. And I've compiled a list together of who I think could potentially be in the running to be one of these try lists. So let's have a look first at the mid-20s EFL experienced wingers. So... Jordan Ibe, of course, released by Bournemouth, but he's played for Wickham Wanderers and he's played on loan for Birmingham and Derby, so he could potentially be one of them. Reese Alassani, who is a Coventry City right winger. I think with him just playing at Coventry City in the EFL, he won't be one of the big options. Same with Eric Osusa, who's played just for Accrington Stanley in the EFL. Same with Osama Zamori, who's played only as a winger for Oxford United as part of the EFL. So those three aren't usually the best options because it's, you know, you've got to have good EFL experience. So one club, in my opinion, isn't enough. One other player it could be is Callum McFadzian. He's a Plymouth Argyle winger, released by Plymouth at the end of last season, this past season just gone. But he's also played for Sheffield United and, of course, Berry, who are now not out of business, but not playing football anywhere at the minute. So... Callum McFadden, and to be fair, we were interested in him a couple of months ago, so he could potentially be an option. Another option it could be is Amari Sterling James, who is a Birmingham City youth, but he's played for Cheltenham and Mansfield. So it might be League 2 experience, but he's mid-20s, 
And, you know, again, like McFadden and I, he's got a load of experience. He's a youth at Birmingham. He's played for two League Two teams. I think that's a decent EFL experience. Uh, and finally, Emmanuel Sanupe, Stevenage winger, released by Stevenage. And he's played for Northampton Town as well. So that's potentially some options there. I think out of those, I would love Jordan Ibe or Callum McFadden. I think Jordan Ibe might be a little too optimistic. I think he'll probably go to a... Uh, a different championship club or he might go into Scotland or somewhere and Callum McFadden we were interested in him a couple of months ago could he be the winger and you know what I won't be completely against Callum McFadden I think that you know I think he's got you know decent game time under him and I think that he'd be a, a, a sign that we'll get behind along with if we get Jordan Ibe though Jesus Christ that's an absolute coup for Rovers um, looking then at the mid-twenties midfielder that's played in Europe, I've got three that are all released by championship clubs, but have had previous experience in Europe. One of them has played for two different countries' leagues. The other ones have played for one European country league, so you know which one I'm going to go with uh, here. But the three I've picked out is Kerim Emrabati, or, or Emrabti, uh, who's played in the Swedish League, but he was recently released as a centre midfielder by Birmingham City. Uh, Marcus Henriksen, released by Hull City, centre midfielder, who's played in the Dutch League and the Norwegian League, so that's potential experience there. And John Terrell, who's played in Spain uh, as well as England. He was released by Hull City, he's a former Arsenal player. So, you know, obviously those three are most likely not going to be the case. I mean, if we're looking for a midfielder who's played in Europe, maybe it is going to be a released player uh, from the English leagues who's played in Europe before. Or it could be, you know, someone in Europe who's been released by a European club, but I don't really know who that could be. But I think if it's one of these three that's potentially the one, I would most, most likely to be Marcus Henriksen because I think he's had more European experience that fits the criteria. But I won't be against Terrell or M M Rabti. Uh Birmingham and Hull fans and fans of Stevenage, Mansfield, Plymouth, Bournemouth, comment down below. You know, are all these players decent? Will these players be good at Rovers? Uh, we need intel. We need intel fast. Uh, now, the mid-20s midfielder with non-league experience. Now, I've not got multiple options for this one. I've only got one. And that is because word on the corner, as Troops would say, Troops TV, make sure you subscribe to him. Arsenal fan, brilliant. And, um, yeah... Word on the corner is it's the midfielder is Ed Williams, who was a centre midfielder for Kidderminster Harriers in the National League South. Now, Kidderminster Harriers, non-league club, you, you, yeah, most of you be thinking, well, what, why, why are we, in, why are we interested in Ed Williams? Well, Ed Williams has apparently attracted interest from loads of different EFL teams. So, you know, if we get someone on a free, or, or bring someone in who's you know got that attracting talent from the EFL. Yeah, that's that's a big coup for Rovers, and I think hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll be a good, you know, strength in depth option. He won't be a first teamer in my opinion. I think he'll be a strength in depth option for if the likes of Whiteman, Gomez, Coppinger, uh, those players start to get injured or suspended, then he'll be a good backup option. Finally, then the Premier League released youngster midfielder. There's four options I've got here. It could be Jake Doyle Hayes from Aston Villa. The CDM, Alex Denny from Everton, could be Herbie Kane from Liverpool, or it could be Ernest Ajiri from Manchester City. Now, those are the four I've got there. There could be more elsewhere. However, I think those are the four it could potentially be. Now, we as Rovers fans would love to see Herbie Kane back in this team. We all want to see it. Um, but it will be interesting to see if it's Doyle Hayes, Denny or Ajiri, or if anyone else has got any other word on who it could be. Comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So that, my friends, the story on the try list. So, very interesting there. So I think the most likely one we know for sure it's going to be is the word on the street, the word on the corner, as it is is Ed Williams from Kinnaminster Harriers that will fit the non-league quality. But let's look at the criteria again, shall we? A, midfield, a centre midfielder, mid-twenties, who's played for many different European clubs. You know, that's kind of similar to Magic Gomez this time last year. Magic Gomez did have a decent season. So I think we're taking the experience of Gomez and the experience of looking for someone like Gomez who's played in Europe. Uh, but to be fair, Gomez was a former Leeds player before he played for this NK Istra in Croatia. So, you know, I think it's very, very likely if we're looking for a, a mid-twenties midfielder who's played in Europe or European or played for European clubs, 
I think we're looking for someone that's either recently been released by a championship or League One club or someone who's played in the EFL as well. So I think that's the experience of Magic Gomez taken on board from last year. So um, it could be one of those three options. The non-league experience, midf uh, non experience midfielder, mid-twenties, again, word on the street, word on the corner, Ed Williams, attracting loads of interest from the EFL, I'll take it. If it's attracting loads of interest from loads of teams from the EFL, you know, and if we get him, the fact that we've, you know, fought off this interest. So, I think it'll be interesting to see if we do go for him. Um, obviously, the Premier League youngster, that's going to be an interesting one to watch out for. Uh, Herbie Kane is obviously my wish. 21 years old, still Premier League youngster, technically. And um, the other three, of course, are around about the teenage mark. So, I think that it will be interesting to see who it is going to be and who it's announced to be. Um, I wonder if the club will actually come out and say, you know, these are the trialists, these are who we kept, these are the ones we didn't keep. Uh, so it should be interesting. And of course, the winger, mid-twenties, EFL experience. Um, like I said, I'd be very happy if it was Jordan I, because I think he didn't get as much playing time as I would have liked to see him get at Bournemouth. And he's a former Liverpool player. You know, we'll have a decent quality in our team. And I think he's the kind of player that Lakilo can learn from. Because Jordan Ibe is primarily a right winger. Uh, but he can play on the left as well. But he can mainly play on the right. So I think that Lakilo could learn from Ibe. And if we're playing a 4-3-3. Instead of a 4-4-2 that we played against Scunthorpe. With Lakilo as Coppin and Coppinger as forwards. God's sake. And um, yeah. I think that um, what we're looking at here. Is Ibe can play on the right. Taylor on the left. Lakilo learns from Ibe. And if we've got any youth academy left wingers to learn from Taylor, then that'll fit the bill perfectly. So, you know, the fact that we've already signed a winger in the kilo and looking for another one. Uh, when it said winger, EFL experience, before I saw the mid-20s, I was like, that's got to be Jackie's Magoma from Birmingham, released by Birmingham. Because, you know, we were interested in him or potentially interested in him. So... You know, I think that I was looking at Magoma, then I saw mid twenties. I was thinking 25, 26. Magoma's like 28, 29. So I was thinking, no, maybe not now. Uh, so it would be interesting to see if it is Jordan Ibe. Uh, but I wouldn't mind the other ones as well. Amari still in James. He's got some potential in him uh, at 25, 26. So, you know, I think that any option would be good. And of course, as fans, we'll get behind any transfer that the club decides to make. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this episode of Transfer Reports. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, cut notification bell so you never miss YouTube video. And for now, guys, I'm the C-H-A-L-L. Goodbye.